The NFL teams most likely to disappoint in 2020. Subscribe to Sports Mafia for more videos. New York Jets. A late season surge skewed perception of what the New York Jets really are. They went 6-2 in the second half of 2019. Sam Darnold was healthy and playing relatively well. The defense flew all over the field. The entire team showed promise. But as the Jets try to build around their talented young quarterback, the organization has serious issues. It's difficult to get past how the team reportedly views head coach Adam Gase. This supposedly led to Jamal Adams' issues with the organization and prompted his eventual trade to the Seattle Seahawks. How does a team play consistently well for someone who has lost the locker room? A potential backslide is not all about Gase though. New York will have an entirely new starting offensive line in front of Darnold. While the group is certainly more talented after heavy investments in the position, the starting five will take time to gel before it works as a cohesive unit. Plus, the team still has question marks at wide receiver and edge rusher and in the secondary. Los Angeles Rams When looking at the NFC West as a whole, the Los Angeles Rams don't hold any distinct advantage over the other three squads, aside from Aaron Donald's usual dominance. The Seahawks and possibly Cardinals have a better quarterback. Seattle and San Francisco have better running games. McVay no longer holds an edge in devising schemes, with Shanahan and Kingsbury calling plays. Defensively, Los Angeles finished 17th in points allowed per game, didn't renew defensive coordinator Wade Phillips' contract, and failed to add a significant performer to the unit this offseason. Instead, the linebacker trio of Corey Littleton, Dante Fowler Jr., and Clay Matthews are no longer with the team, while six-time Pro Bowl safety Eric Weddle retired. 18 months ago, the Rams were playing in Super Bowl 53 against the New England Patriots. Now, they're arguably the worst position squad in their division. McVay could very well experience his first losing season since taking over the team. Tennessee Titans Ryan Tannehill's 2019 performance can be viewed in two ways. Either his recent work is a predictor of future success in a system ideally suited to his skill set, or he's the next flash in the pan who'll fizzle out after he fooled his team into signing him into a lucrative long-term contract extension. The truth probably lies somewhere in the middle, which means it's unlikely he'll be as effective during his second Titans campaign. Henry's situation is much simpler. His usage rate from last season could decrease his effectiveness this fall. The 247 pound back accumulated 409 touches, including the playoffs. Yes, the league's leading rusher is a big physical back and only 26, but history shows the Titans should expect a dip in production from Henry after he carried such a heavy load. Tennessee is a well-coached team with a talented backfield. Even so, the Titans caught lightning in a bottle last season with a trip to the AFC Championship game and likely won't replicate that success. New England Patriots The Patriots dynasty isn't dead, but it will surely look much different this season than it has in a very long time. From a talent standpoint, the team can still compete at a relatively high level. Really, any success New England experiences during the upcoming campaign hinges on Cam Newton's potential re-emergence and how quickly the new look squad comes together. He's coming right away, head down, and tried to pick it up as quick as possible, running back Rex Burkhead told reporters of Newton. His first impact has been great, he's just trying to learn as much as he can and mesh in jail with the rest of the guys. New England could still be good enough to capture the AFC East, but that says more about the other teams in the division since the Patriots are no longer operating by the same Super Bowl standard that dominated the last 20 years. Green Bay Packers As always, the Green Bay Packers will go as far as Aaron Rodgers leads them and the team is unlikely to experience the same level of success it did a year ago when it finished 13-3 and went to the NFC Championship game. The reason so much emphasis is placed on Rodgers is twofold. The Packers continually ignore opportunities to place high-quality skill position performers around the quarterback, and Green Bay needs the two-time league MVP to be a consistent difference maker after it played in many tight games last season. Last year's success also had a pinch of luck thrown in. Seven of the team's 13 wins were by one score, and Green Bay finished 6-1 in contests decided by seven or fewer points. The Packers' plus 63-point differential was the lowest ever for a team with the same record over the last 31 seasons. No improvements on the roster's most questionable position group, and more close games that could break other way should bring Green Bay back to the NFC North Pack this fall. Tampa Bay Buccaneers Obviously, Brady's influence on the franchise will be positive, and Tampa Bay should be considered a playoff contender. But the Bucks' move don't automatically turn them into a Super Bowl contender, as Las Vegas bookmakers are making them out to be. Despite the high-profile names added to the roster, the Buccaneers are still transitioning at quarterback, tight end, right tackle, and safety. It's not simply about the Buccaneers either. They play in a difficult NFC South that features one of the league's most stable, successful NFC franchises in the New Orleans Saints. The Atlanta Falcons had the same record as Tampa Bay last year. 
Dan Quinn's squad won its last four games and added Dante Fowler Jr., Todd Gurley, and Hayden Hurst this offseason. Brady and company will be fun to watch, but this group may not be a top 5 team in the NFC, let alone the entire NFL. Baltimore Ravens Sometimes a team sets the bar so high, it's impossible to live up to that standard the following year. The Baltimore Ravens are in that position, in large part because of reigning MVP Lamar Jackson. The second-year quarterback smashed his position's rushing record with 1,206 yards last year. He helped lead the most prolific rushing offense in NFL history. As a passer, Jackson finished 1st, 3rd, and 8th in passing touchdowns, quarterback rating, and completion percentage. As a team, the Ravens posted 14 victories, including 10 straight to end the regular season before bowing out in the divisional round to the Titans. Not only could Baltimore's regular season performance be worse this year, but the Ravens also have plenty of competition within their own division to ruin any aspirations of a Super Bowl appearance. The Pittsburgh Steelers have a healthy Ben Roethlisberger behind center again. The Browns have so much talent and a new coaching staff, and even the Cincinnati Bengals are better. The Ravens will have a tough road after a year of dominance. That's it for today's Sports Mafia video. Thank you for watching. If you like this video and want to see more Sports Mafia content, click the circle subscribe button so you never miss a single video. Hope you enjoyed.